It was this time last year that I produced the video which kickstarted not only my channel, but my one dino only series, as I attempted to beat the island with just raptors. However, it didn't quite go to plan, and with Ark Survival Ascended right round the corner, I decided that I couldn't live with my own failure. So I set myself the task of beating every Ark story map with just raptors, starting of course with where it all began, the island. I hope you enjoy the video, and if you do, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. On day one, I spawned on the beaches of the west coast, close to Red Obelisk. This is generally my go-to spawn point on the island, as it's relatively bob friendly, and has a good amount of explorer notes nearby that I can level up from. First though, I crafted myself a pick, and used that to get some flint, which I could make a stone hatchet and some spears with. With the spears now in my possession, I took out some dodos and compies to get some hide. As the first night neared on our first day on the island, I made a campfire and cooked up some meat on it, as well as staying by it through the night in order to stay warm. The next morning, with my bow and arrows, I set off to start mining some metal, before I was rudely interrupted. What? Oh, why? Why? Ah, oh, this After making my way back to my body, I managed to dodge past the Carno, collect my bag, and get back to work. I collected the Explorer notes on the top of the mountain, which gave me some nice levels, and then set about getting some crystal to make an awesome spyglass with. Probably a good time to mention that this was one of the core mods that I used during this challenge, which was Structures Plus, Dino Storage, and of course Awesome Spyglass. Things do get a bit more crazy later on with the mods, but I'll save that for later in the video. With my Thatch Foundation and Mortar and Pestle down, I set to work on getting some basic gear going. This wouldn't be a permanent base spot, rather just a starter outpost. With my Smithy now made, I quickly made myself a metal pick, which I used to farm metal far more efficiently. I was soon at a point where I was ready to upgrade my regular bow to a crossbow, as I was already eyeing up my first raptor tame. Ball of God. And... Ball of God again. We, we could tame both, actually. Should we just tame both? Help me, let's prioritise getting this one. I've just realised we might have messed up here. Don't know, I'm going to have to kill this one. Oh, Rampy. What are you doing? Uh oh. This one's going to get away in a minute. After a bit of trouble, I knocked out a level 90 raptor for my first time of the challenge. Okay, I'm back to... I'm very slow, so I'm going to have to try and burn a dino to death. Might have been a mistake. Might have been a mistake. Might... Be 0.6 HP. Okay. We're alive. Oh! oh! Turns out this early game tame wasn't exactly going to be a walk in the park though, as I was ambushed by a wild Ferrazino while waiting for it to tame. Thankfully, I made it back and saw that the raptor was unharmed, much to my relief. We then set off an adventure back towards Red Obelisk, where we would gather some explorer notes. I'm going to... Oh. After falling off a cliff for the first time, I grabbed this explorer note. Now this note is normally a 4 times explorer note, but apparently on single player all notes are actually 4x, which is something that I wasn't actually aware of before starting this series. The notes allowed me to level my raptor up until I had a whopping 4k HP, and I then returned to my starter outpost to continue farming up some gear. I then set off across the map on the journey of a lifetime. It was time to find my raptor breeders, however long it took. I then found a level 150 raptor with 28 points into damage. My hopes were high and after gathering some prime from a Ferrazinosaur, I was crushed to see that it had only come out with 35 points into melee. Of the 74 bonus levels it had received, only 7 had gone into melee. It was an absolute shocker. 35 points was simply not going to cut it, but at least this would operate as a 0 breeder raptor as it was a female. I pressed on and on the outskirts of the snow biome, I encountered a huge cluster of raptors, which included this 145 with 29 points into melee. Surely, surely this one would be the one. After getting its attention, I bowled it and knocked it out. I got it some prime and eagerly awaited to see what it came out with. This time, I'd hit the jackpot, and it came out with 47 points into melee, which is a cracking starter stat for any breed line. Buzzing with my new raptor, I cryoboard him up and continued with the search this time looking for a HP stat. But first guys, it's ad time. Have you ever dreamed of flying an aircraft using nothing more than a mouse and keyboard? 
or perhaps you're looking for a game to play cross-platform with your friends, regardless if they use PC, Xbox or PlayStation. Well luckily for you my friends, you're in luck, as I have just that game for you. War Thunder is the most complete vehicle combat game out there, with more than 200 tanks, planes, helicopters, ships, raptors, okay maybe not raptors, but still. Each of these vehicles are meticulously designed right down to their individual components, which helps to deliver the ultimate immersive combat experience. You can also customise these vehicles and choose what types of camouflage, historical markings or 3D decorations you want to add, making your choice of vehicle really feel like yours. The thing that really stands out to me most about War Thunder is its incredible graphics and 4K resolution, which provides a great gaming experience for you and your friends. By using my link in the description, you'll get a large free bonus pack, including multiple free premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters and much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Go and download War Thunder, not forgetting to use my link in the description, and remember it is available on all platforms, so spread the word to all your friends. Thank you so much to the folks at War Thunder for sponsoring this video. I had got incredibly lucky early on with those two high level raptors, but it would be a while before I saw such luck again. I searched up and down the map, but even the few high levels I found, the HP stats were so poor on them that they just weren't worth taming. At the hidden lake however, I managed to find myself an even better base melee stat of 31. This melee stat look was honestly incredible, and while it was still unlikely to beat the 47 points I had just tamed, I had to tame it up and see what we ended up with. In the end it came out with a very respectable 44 points into melee, which in normal circumstances would have been an excellent starting stat. In our case, it was a bit useless. Luckily it appeared that all the high level raptors had been hiding out here in the hidden lake, and I found this 150 female with 27 points into HP. After tame it came out with 42 points, something that I was more than happy to start breeding with. Leaving the hidden lake it was time to set off to find a place to call home, so I made myself a raft, but before I set sail too far I had to stop and grab some obsidian from the northwest mountain. Through the night and the fog I sailed, and I even did have to save fresh the raptor from a capro after he was rudely taken off the raft. The next morning though, I arrived at my place of solitude, Herbivore Island. This is the place that I would call home, not just for this 100 days, but for my entire raptor only playthrough. I set about farming up some metal to get started, and then took out all the nearby rocks and trees in order to make a start on my base. Now, I'm not really known for my base designs, I prefer to live off 4 thatch foundations, but I promised myself that I would give it a good go on this challenge, and you'll see later how that went. After placing the foundations down for a base, I made a crafting station and placed down the first fabricator, which is always a big step on any arc journey. With the raptor army out of their pods, we surveyed the place that we would now call home. But this was only the start of the army, and we had a long way to go and lots of breeding to be done. I realised that if I wanted to start my breeding, I would need to make an egg incubator, so I set off into the perilous snow biome to get some organic polymer. I used a raft and placed down some standing torches to keep me warm, and then set off. After avoiding the lead right beside my base, I safely arrived at the snow biome, where it was indeed very cold. Luckily I didn't have to stay too long, and after murdering a couple of unsuspecting baby penguins, I set back off in the direction of base, only for things to take a turn for the worse. No, oh, yep, he's aggroed on me. He's aggroed on me. Oh, it's not good. It's really not good. It's really not good. Raptor, help! Help! Oh, I got on him. I got back on him. I got back on him. I'm off him. You got the Sarko. We got the Sarko. Okay. Uh, this is almost... This has turned into a bit of a disaster. Not quite sure how we're alive, but we are. And that's the main thing, right? Okay. So how is that Sabre gaining Torpor? Oh, because I've been punching it. That's why. All right. After just about getting out of the snow biome alive, I stopped off on top of the northeast mountain once more to gather some crystal before being jumped by a baryonyx on the way back to base. This baryonyx clearly had some mad special powers as it managed to stun me while I was actually stood on dry land on my raft. Eventually, while it sat there chipping away at my poor raptor, I managed to take it out with my crossbow and we returned to base. I wasn't there long however as I was soon setting off back out into the mainland where I went in search of some electronics and cementing paste. I got the electronics from a tech stego and Rex found on the shores nearby, and then I had to trek all the way back up to the Hidden Lake once more for the cementing paste from the beaver dams. The island is one of the most annoying maps to farm paste on, hence why I have to take all these long journeys. However, it was all worth it, as once I returned to base with the materials, I managed to make myself an egg incubator. I also decided to have a play with taxidermies and make use of some of these amazing easter colours that could be found around the map. I now just needed somewhere to breed. 
And thus, instead of trying to build on the cramped type breeding area near my main base and crafting area, I opted for an ocean platform. After placing it down in the shallow water next to my base, I set about converting it into a fully functional breeding room. And after doing the incredibly tedious job of the wiring and enclosing the space, it was all ready to go. And it was indeed now time to get some eggs cracking. Eggs, 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 eggs. Yes, Aussie, eggs indeed. I started off by hatching some 00 females, and I will take this moment to say that if you want to know how I do my breeding, I did do a dedicated video to this during my playthrough, so go and check it out, and the entire series if you want a more in-depth perspective of how this 100 days went. Using the egg incubator, after a short while I managed to get my first mutation to 49 melee. I wanted to aim for about 70 points on both lines, so we still had a long way to go on this one, but it was a start. Before doing any further breeding, I set off on the raft once more in pursuit of some crystal. Luckily, one of the easiest crystal farm spots in the game was the southeastern lava cave, which was found directly opposite my base. These crystals which dangle from the ceiling can actually be mined for crystal, which is incredibly handy and something that I didn't know before it was pointed out in the comments. Back at base, it was time to begin the mutation grinding. I grinded for approximately 20 in-game days and ended with closing stats of 71 melee and 70 HP. If you do want to see a bit more of the in-depth guide on this, like I said, go check out the full series of Raptors Evolved. With both stats achieved, I set about combining them and breeding up the first few Super Raptors, which I would use to track down some of the early game artifacts of this challenge. As some of you know, there is only one way that we level up on this channel, and that is of course by slaughtering the innocent offspring. With the Raptor army raised and levelled, we had some good fun terrorising the locals on Herbivore Island before welcoming back the return of a channel icon. That's right, the legendary Lightning McQueen is back with a bang. And big up my editor and fellow 100 Days creator Owen for creating this amazing paint job on him. Go and check out his channel in the description below. With McQueen at my side, it was time to begin the artifact hunt. We started off by visiting the cave, commonly known as South 2, in search of the artifact of the hunter. Right, I'm not liking the sound of that Titan Boa, I'm not gonna lie. Is it in the walls? <laughs> oh, it's there! Okay, that actually quite scared. Uh, okay, okay, Rampy, Rampy might have had a jump scare there. Oh, you can actually walk through here? Right, that does not look like it's raptor friendly. I, I'm being, I was being a complete and utter idiot there. After collecting the artifacts of the hunter, we were one artifact down, and I made my way back out of the cave. We still had a total of nine more to go, and they were only going to get tougher from here. On my way to our next target, I ran into this level 10 alpha raptor, and of course I had to use this opportunity to show the true power of the mighty Lightning McQueen. The alpha raptor didn't stand a chance. And after being slightly disappointed at the loot he dropped, I continued into the lava cave I had earlier used to farm crystal, but this time in search of the artifact of the massive. A couple of nerve wracking jumps later, and I had successfully retrieved the artifact of the massive, Jarma Free, which I was quite happy with, as lightning falling in the lava would have been a bit of a disaster. I made my way back out of the cave and made sure to be careful of the jumps. Next up was Kano Cave. So I trekked up the entire eastern side of the map towards Kano Island. Now, Kano Cave is the home of the artifact of the Devourer. And after entering the cave, I realised that Lightning wasn't going to be able to be capable of taking on everything in here on his own. So I had to take a huge fall down to the bottom of the cave, perform a clutch dismount so as not to take any fall damage, and then quickly jump off my raptor once more while I grab the artifact. Getting out of Karno Cave itself can be a tricky affair, but luckily it's an escape that I have done a few times before, so I was prepared for the challenges on each part of these jumps. Right, now this jump, by the way, is really awkward. As evidenced. After making it over the last one, I sprinted to the water part and exited the cave back onto the shores of sunny Kano Island. After briefly stopping to admire the view from Obsidian Mountain, I headed on down towards the artifact of the Clever Cave. I did actually nearly manage to kill McQueen from fall damage, which was not my finest moment, especially as the Clever artifact can be tricky if you aren't careful. With a severely injured lightning, I staggered on into the cave. As I arrived at the artifact, I was swarmed by various mobs and had to retreat a little bit in order to play this a bit more tactically. Okay, I'm going to watch my health a bit closely. Let me just concentrate a little Concentrate a little bit. I've got mega rabies, haven't I? That's not good. We're in big trouble. Okay, I'm in, in big trouble. In big trouble. We are in big trouble. I had managed to contact mega rabies from the bats in there, and the alpha plorers had also broken my armor. Still, I just about survived, and after taking out the last of the mobs, I managed to collect the artifact of the clever. Probably the scariest and closest call that we'd had so far, but we had still come out victorious. 
Much tougher tasks lay ahead though, and back at base we began to prepare for them as the oxygen raptors grew up. Before we worried too much about that though, we had another cave to go to. Uh oh, Sarko's there. The Sarkos are fine outside of the water though, it's when they're in the water. I think that they're danger dangerous, because that's when they can take me off. I, 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 I'm in trouble. In big trouble. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Rampy Ron. McQueen! Located on the edge of the swamp, Lightning and I entered the cave of the Artifact of the Pack. I had really struggled in this cave in the last Raptor 100 days, but this was mainly due to me not bringing grappling hooks and making myself swim through the Sarko infested freezing tunnels. With grappling hooks you can avoid this completely and it makes getting this artifact much much simpler. At base I prepared for the big ones, the water artifacts. I made myself up a set of scuba and then put an Aquaman paint job on the Oxyraptor and just like that he became Aquaraptor. I set off with McQueen and we headed to the west coast to try our hand at the artifact of the brute. What? Why is Aquaraptor's colour gone? Right, I... Where's he gone? Turns out Dino Storage actually takes away paint jobs, which I was told it didn't. I think there might be a way I can change this in the settings, so perhaps it'll be fixed for the next 100 days. Anyway, with my scuba set on, we entered the Brute Cave. This is commonly known as Easy Cave, as out of the two water caves on the island, believe it or not, it is the easier one. It is certainly easy to swim on foot, which is mainly due to these accessible land portions which allow you to separate the cave into different swimming segments. As I got closer to the artifact, I used my grappling hook to shoot me out of the water and then threw out Aquaraptor while I ran through the last portion of the cave on him. I then dunked myself straight into the water, avoiding any of the nearby eels and snatched up the artifact and grappled back up to safety. Getting out of the cave was fine as no new hostiles had spawned on my way and just like that, the first water artifact had been retrieved. Surely if this one was so easy, the next one couldn't be much harder, right? Oh boy, I was wrong on that one. A paintless McQueen and I went straight over to the opposite side of the map to try out the hard water cave. Now, this cave is harder for a number of reasons, including its crazily excessive spawns, crazy high level spawns, and of course what I will refer to as Death Corridor, which leads into the artifact chamber. The first run in the cave didn't go too well, as after making it through the entrance hallway, I was immediately spotted by a level 220 Mosasaur, who ate me like I was a packet of Walker's crisps. Salt and vinegar on top, by the way. So it was time to get the big guns out, and after making my way back to the cave, I threw out Aquaraptor and prepared for the battle of my life. Swimming down into the chamber, it became quickly apparent that this was not going to end well. The swarms of Megalodons surrounded me, and when I saw the Alpha Megalodon come out of the wall, I knew that it was curtains for me and Aquaraptor. The jellyfish put us out of our misery early, and I retreated back to base with my tail between my legs, in order to come up with a new plan. The first plan involved me coming back again with a set of flak and scuba flippers, but this one went about as well as the first two plans. It was evident that I would need some serious firepower to be able to take on this cave. So back at base, I began to breed an army. Not just an army, but an oxygen raptor army. Surely if I return to the cave with an army full of support, nothing could get in our way. I leveled these aqua raptors in the same way that I level everything, by slaughtering some babies. I then left them outside a base to heal up, along with their leader Blue Mohawk. While the raptors healed up, it was important that I use this time profitably, so I took a mind wipe tonic so I could pump some more fortitude, and then made the trek to the snow biome, in search of the artifact of the Sky Lord. Okay. Okay, alright. We're gonna need lightning. We're gonna need lightning. Inside this cave, it was very cold. Although this was partially because I was too lazy to drive my raft over with a smithy to make some fair armour. The freezing cold meant that I had to use the good old sleeping bag respawn method where you just simply have to try and make use of the limited time you have in there alive before dying and of course respawning with a sleeping bag. Having an otter on my shoulder at this point would have massively helped but of course that my friends in a raptor only challenge isn't allowed. A lot of deaths later I did grab the artifact without even putting my armour back on for some reason and we then made our way out of the cave as fast as possible. At base, the raptors were still taking an absolute age to heal, so I decided to target the next artifact, which would be the Artifact of the Immune, located in the Swamp Cave. Now, to survive this cave, you either need a gas mask, a full scuba set, or a combination of scuba and ghillie. I opted for the last option, and once inside, threw out my decent raptor army, and then let them smash everything to pieces. Now, things were going quite well, until an Arthur Plora decided to destroy my set of armour. But this, ladies and gentlemen, was a new and improved rampy, and I had brought back up in preparation for this. The raptors made short work of the rest of the cave, and we collected the artifact immune as our reward. The swamp cave is actually a great way to farm cementing paste with a frog, or for leveling your dino, as the super high level bugs in here are fantastic for levels. Returning to base, it was time to put my army to work. They were all healed up and leveled, so it was a time to return to the hard water cave. I had leveled them all to about 1k oxygen, 10k HP and the rest in melee. 
I was pretty confident that they would be able to shred the Mosers that were proving to be such a pain in the entryway to the cave. I left lightning on the beach and swam down towards the cave, using a chair to regain my stamina in the water, which yes, is possible if you didn't know. Inside the cave, I was worried about the Mosasaurs, but perhaps what I wasn't paying enough attention to was the hordes of high-level Megalodons that you find in this cave. We gotta go, we gotta go. We gotta go. Oh, this is a mess. <laughs> Come on, Aqua, attack them. All right. Oh, it's not. It's really not good. Let me put my soul away. Right. Come on. Come on, Raptor Army. Oh, that pack buff is just ridiculous. This was an awful, awful idea. Look at how bloody they all are, man. Look how bloody mine is. Where's the Moses gone? All right, well I've well I've gone for it. Without taking out a single Moser, I was completely and utterly stopped at the entrance by a large pack of megalodons. Large packs of megalodons are seriously not to be messed with, and unfortunately, I learnt this the hard way. I did take this opportunity though to lure the megalodons and the nearby Tuso away from the entrance to the hallway of death, which should provide a clearer path for me. This was actually a strategy that I continued to use for about the next half an hour, sacrificing myself numerous amounts of times, but gradually luring the host of hostile creatures away from the areas that were troubling me. I started with the entrance and around the tunnel entrance, but soon I began to kite the creatures out of the hallway of death itself. It's probably worth noting that the only reason that I could do this was because I had mind right now and leveled almost purely oxygen and movement speed. This allowed my character to swim much faster in the water and I was even now managing to outswim an alpha megalodon. Even after being able to outswim the alpha though, it was the eels that were the big issue. The shock radius on these things is uh, absolutely ridiculous. I swear that it actually doesn't hit you half the majority of the time, but the next thing you know, you're stunned. I kited as many creatures out of the tunnel of doom as possible and then made a break from it. With the majority of the eels gone, I had a clear shot at getting the artifact. How many eels do we have left? Where are all the eels? I don't even know where my body is, but I may as well just get a fresh artifact, right? Oh no, no way. Is this the moment? Oh! How am I alive? After hours of work, I had retrieved the Artifact of the Cunning, which left us with only one artifact left to go. The problem for me though, was this cave was of course, the Island Ice Cave. One of Ark's most notorious caves. But I didn't have time to mess around, as day 70 was fast approaching and the clock was ticking. To do this cave, I would first need to finally make myself a long overdue set of fur armour. So I left base with McQueen and some podded raptors on my raft, as I would first have to farm some pelts before I could go any further. After narrowly avoiding a lead disaster, we arrived at the snow biome, and I killed anything I could get my hands on that would drop some pelts. After gathering enough pelts to make myself a set of full armour, I entered the snow cave, where I was met by the hostile locals at the cave entrance. Uh... Get him! Get him, boys! Pack boost! Uh oh! It's getting messy! Over here! Over here, Raptors! Passive! Get the Yetis! That's alright! Okay! Decent! Good damage! Good damage! After seeing that I was still freezing inside the cave, I briefly returned outside to make sure that I had some hide and fibre to make a lot of sleeping bags, as I was going to need them. Oh! Where did that thing come from? What? Yeah. 
and then we don't have to fight them. Oh no, raptors! No, we've left one of them to fight on the on his own. Oh no, oh we messed up big time. They don't even have mate boost anymore. Come on, raptors! Oh, we messed up. I messed up. Stay there. I'm going to save him. No. Oh, they're, oh, they're here. They're all here. I don't know how they got... I don't know how they caught up, but they're all here. The raptors had already taken a bit of a battering, and I was freezing to death at an alarming rate. This was, of course, still with full fur and pump fortitude, so this cave is seriously not to be messed with. At this stage, I didn't have much choice, though, and I just had to keep going, respawning with the sleeping bags whenever I needed to. The biggest danger in this cave were the Pelovias, and I was soon about to be reminded that. And the Pelovia as well. Whoa. Oh, why me? No! Oh, no! I'd been silly enough not to have a sleeping bag placed down at my time of death, so I was forced to respawn at base and make my complete way back to the cave with only hide armor and torches to keep me warm. When I made it back on, though, my something had gone horribly, horribly wrong. Where's, where's the raptors gone? I looked for what felt like hours for these raptors, but ultimately came to one conclusion. I'd been arced. The raptors had clearly fallen through the mesh upon my death, and Lightning and the gang were not going to be found. I was able to get Lightning back, which I think was fair enough using the Soul Terminal, and the comment said I should, but unfortunately the boss raptors would never ever be seen again. The worst thing was that they were actually my only good raptors left, which meant that I had to go and get the Expendables out. The majority of these raptors were ex-breeders from my mutation hunting, and their time in the limelight had arrived. The only problem was, they weren't very strong. In fact, they weren't very strong at all. And there was a lot of death for me and the raptors. Ah, oh, it's 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 a game. It's, it's it's a GG. Right till the end, we fight. No, we don't. Oh, we do. We are ah, Polovias. Oh no, no, no. Hi, divers. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm just gonna pop back over these crystals if you don't mind. Yeah, yep. Yeah, see you later. Oh, he's got past it! Run! After reaching the last portion of the cave, I was forced to do one last trip home for some extra raptors to help me push through this final section. After gathering my gear, I threw out the raptors and we pushed on right to the end of the cave. Oh, how I've waited for this moment. Thank you very much. Let me get out of this hellhole. Let's go. With the artifacts of the strong retrieved, I gratefully sailed out of the snow biome and back towards base. At base, it was now time to get the boss raptors raising, something that probably should have been done earlier on in the challenge. Once they were leveled, there was just a small matter of waiting them to regain the 15,000 health needed before I could confidently take on the bosses of the island. As this challenge was done on single player, it meant that I needed to find something productive to do with my time while they all healed up. In the end, I opted to build a greenhouse, as I wanted to grow some tinto berries, especially to make some med brews with, ahead of the upcoming boss fights, and of course, hopefully, the tech cave and overseer. I used a lava cave next to my base in order to farm some crystals, and then set about making the greenhouse. All I actually needed to do in order for me to get the maximum greenhouse buff was to put the greenhouse ceilings down, and then stack the crop plots on top of each other for maximum space. In the breeding area, I hatched up some extra raptors, as I realised that you can actually take 50 into the tech cave, and I would certainly need more than 20 raptors to have the best chance of success in there. I then set off back into the mainland to look for some tech raptors and a raptor blueprint. Now, I had already got a 49 journeyman armour raptor blueprint, but for a journeyman saddle blueprint, it was pretty low armour and kind of expensive, so I hunted them up in hope of getting something better. I also wanted to tame up some tech raptors to set up my very own metal farm, as the metal nodes were taking quite some time on Herbivore Island to respawn. The Boulder God himself was out in full force, and I managed to tame up a male and female tech raptor. At base, I enabled mating on them, and now I technically had an unlimited supply of metal. And yes guys, before you say in the comments, I will get a chainsaw once we get on Scorched for this, and use that to farm metal with them. I then needed fertilizer, so I took advantage of the infinite toilet bug that Ark has, where I was able to produce as much fertilizer as I wanted, which I would use to fertilize my many crop plots. With my berries and crops safely growing at base, I returned to drop hunting, all over the map. On the top of Frostfang, I found a red drop, which was pretty much the best drop that I'd found so far. 
Even with supply loot quality set to 2.0, the drops on the island are honestly shocking, and I really hope ahead of Arc Survival Ascended that this is something that Wildcard are seriously looking at. My search for another Raptor blueprint took me far and wide, and I even went back into South 2 Cave to loot a green cave drop in the hope that it might have dropped a Raptor blueprint. In the end, I did find one in a green drop on the north coast opposite Kano Island. Now, it was only a ramshackle, but it was a pretty good ramshackle. Ultimately, after getting back to base and comparing the blueprints, I opted to make 20 of the journeyman ones, and would then make 30 or so of the ramshackle ones for the throwaway raptors. After making the saddles, I had no time to lose, and it was time to get on with the bosses of the island. First up, at Green Obelisk, we fought the Broodmother. And, um, I'm kind of banking on us winning this. Get him, Raptors. Oh, it's a her, isn't it? It's a her. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hate, I hate that poison ball. There's a lot of damage that. How are the Raptors looking? Um, Pretty good. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. No issues on this one, I don't think. I'm just trying to use my pack buff. Is there, a, there must be a cooldown on it. Oh. There we go. There's the pack buff. And there is the Broodmother down. 20 element. Not too bad. Not too bad. The Broodmother fight had gone extremely smoothly. And with the Raptors barely losing any HP. After returning home with my trophies and grabbing my fur, I set off to Blue Obelisk right away to take on the Mega Piff. Um, so it's time to take on the monkey. I'm going to spawn him in. And I'm going to immediately bring the raptors to the kind of like back of the arena. Uh, and this is, this is where I would recommend fighting the monkey. You don't want to fight him near the bridge. If you fight this monkey near the bridge, it might end in disaster. And I would hate for you guys to uh, for it to end in disaster. We do not like big trouble around here. We do not like big trouble. So, let's take on our second island boss with just raptors. Oh, we're not even freezing. Great stuff. Alright, come here, you lot. We're going to go this way. Come on, raptors. That'll do. Right, now I've got to be pretty careful there. I've got to aggro the monkey and make sure he comes this way. Hi, monkey. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. He's coming. I do not want to get hit by a boulder because that might knock me off the ledge. There's an invisible barrier there, but there isn't there. And you've always got to be careful with these invisible barriers. Never trust them too much. It's my advice. I think I've been knocked off the edge over here in the corner before. But yeah, that's like the main culprit, that death pit right there. Right, I'm going to wait for the monkey to literally come all the way over here. He's probably going to launch a big rock at me in a minute. Come on, throw your rock. There it is. Yeah, pathetic. All right, we're waiting. We're waiting. Get him, Raptors. Yeah, let's get the pack buff in. All right. Yeah, shouldn't be a problem, he problem health-wise. Gamma monkey is not really that difficult. How much damage do they do? Like 100 per hit? 160 I'm seeing. Oh, the boulder does 472. Alright, that's fine, that's fine. Go on, lightning. Get in there, lad. I'm doing 363 as the pack leader, I believe. It's a huge difference. Why? Wow. Well, that was a bit of a walk in the park, to be honest. An absolute walk in the park. The last and most dangerous fight we had to do was the dragon. So off I set to Red Obelisk. Without further ado, I've taken the fur off. I've got... Oh, I got a pair of apprentice ghillie leggings from a blue drop on the way over to do the monkey fight. And that's kind of useful for this fight because dragon's a bit hot. Uh, I am going to move my med brews actually into slot one. Because you might need them in the dragon fight. This is the most challenging fight that we have. Apart from the tech cave. But I am quietly confident. We've just got to make sure that we play it well once we get into the arena. So without further ado, enjoy the last fight. 
Alright, there's Dragon. He's going to hit them with a fireball. I know he is. That's just part of the parcel of the dragon fight. I'm just going to whistle passive. we just got to wait for him to land, honestly. I've got to try and avoid them personally. This is by far the longest fight as well of this video because you've got to wait for him to land. Where's his fireball? What is this dragon doing? There it is. There it is. Oof. Not too bad. Only a couple under damage. Ah. I'm sorry, raptors. I'm sorry. Where is he? Oh, he's above me. He's above me. All right. Right, now kill him, raptors. All right, where's the dragon? Where's the dragon? Oh. There's another one. Yep, this is still the most difficult fight. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Not into the lava. Not into the lava. Come on, lightning. Take the, take the dynamo fight. Right, we'll wait for him to come over here. Wait for him. He comes over here. Otherwise, we're going to end up fighting him in the lava. And go now. Go now. All right, I've done the pack buff. Underneath the legs, guys. Underneath the legs. Okay, he is still hitting some of them. A lot of these raptors he just can't hit. 400k health, though, is still a lot. That damage from McQueen, bearing in mind he has the lowest damage DPS here, is just crazy. 800 damage. He's like biting like a couple of the raptors like over and over. But all these lot, he's just not hitting. Oh, we lost two raptors. We lost three raptors. Some casualties have been taken. But I think we will be successful. Oh, oh he's moving. And we are successful. The dragon is down. 80 element is secured. But we did... We did lose a couple of casualties. Before we enter the last edge of this video, I just wanted to show you guys this incredible Raptor Paddock base, designed by the extremely talented Songbird Gaming, one of Ark's finest builders. Unfortunately, this base wasn't ready in time to be showcased in the series before I took on the Tech Cave, which is why it hasn't had its own dedicated episode of Raptors Evolved yet, but I wanted to give you guys a quick sneak peek at what you have in store for an upcoming video. I think Songbird has done an amazing job here, designing special paddocks for each type of raptor we will tame in this challenge, as well as incorporating a crafting room, breeding room, hall of fame, and so much more. The last shot I'll leave you with here, guys, is these giant raptors at the front of Herbivore Island, welcoming you to the main station of Raptors Evolved. So yeah, please do go on and subscribe to Songbird. She did a fantastic job here designing this base. I know she's planning on making a video of this to showcase herself. So make sure you guys go and show her some support in the comments. Now, let's go and kick some overseer butt. It was way past day 90 by the time the raptors were healed and ready to go again. I had, of course, brought some new faces along for the ride, as well as the original boss raptors that I had. These, of course, did have the ramshackle saddle on, but I was still confident that they would be a good asset. Last time on my Raptor 100 days, the tech cave had been my undoing. So sit back and enjoy this spectacle. And a big thank you to my editor, Owen, for accompanying me on this journey to get these special cinematic shots. The way I saw it, I had three major dangers in this cave. The big three. The Pelovia, the Microraptor, and the Uti. For those who are unaware, the reason the Uti was such a scary proposition was because that it one hit fears the raptors. And when you are surrounded by lava, this is not ideal. Not ideal to say the least. Oh, there is so much to contend with in this cave. It's honestly crazy. Forgive me if I'm a bit quiet. The tech cave is no joke whatsoever. The UTs were causing issues right away, but so far we had only lost one raptor to them. Progress was being made, but the toughest part was yet to come. Get in there! That's in the UT. 
UT, quick. The UT, don't let him... After narrowly avoiding losing my life at the hands of a micro raptor, I continued on down the cave, making sure that the raptors targeted any UTs first that were standing in our way. I also brought along a long neck rifle for the sole purpose of aggroing dinos into the lava, and this was especially useful when I saw two rather intimidating UTs blocking the way. Can we get them all? Getting the dino? because I got the, like, the last touch on it. The sharp turns of the tech cave were gradually causing me to lose raptors. And while of course I should have soul gunned them back out of the lava, I um, sort of forgot that I had one. Anyway, we continued on down the narrow winding path as we reached the end game of the tech cave. As we enter the closing stages of this video, I would like to once again remind you guys to go and download War Thunder using my link in the description. Its cross-platform experience makes it the perfect game to sit back and play with all your friends. Thanks once again to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Make something very clear. Oh no, 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 no. Not good, not good. No! Microraptor! Microraptor! Get it, McQueen! McQueen, there's another one! McQueen, there's another one! Ah, get it! Oh! Get it, Raptors. Oh no, oh no, this might be bad. Yuji's dead, Yuji's dead, Yuji's dead. Is there a second one? Looks like there's only one. At the final turning before reaching the entrance to the portal room, we were faced with a Carcharodontosaurus. Now, while I could have fought this, I decided that the safer option was to kite it into the lava. So with my long neck out, that is exactly what I did. However, it seemed that my raptors disobeyed me and decided that they wanted to go and take on the Carcar themselves. In fairness to the raptors, they did me proud and managed to actually kill the Karchar with little to no deaths. After making it through the tech cave and into the Overseer Arena, I put on my fur armour and drank a Freer curry, which helps to keep you warm. I was just about freezing still, but was losing health so slowly that I could easily regain it with my med bruise. Oh yes, probably a good time to mention that I did mind wipe before doing this cave, boosting my fortitude to 90 in order for me to survive the harsh climate of the tech cave. I soon reached the portal where I teleported myself and the remaining raptors to the final boss fight. I believe that I had around 25 to 30 left out of the 50 that I started with and I was feeling confident as I headed down the Hall of Fame and crossed the bridge leading to the Overseer fight. This was it, the final fight, and destiny had arrived for myself, the Queen and the Raptor army. Have you never done the Overshield fight? It's... oh wow. Oh look at that, look at the HP. Let's go Raptors! It's the monkey! But he does do 500 damage a hit. Serrated. It's going good, it's going good. Get after it, Raptors! We do not want that for- oh. Get him, Stefan! No! Oh, okay, okay, we got a boss. We got the last boss. Oh, okay, it really matters about the dragon. Get the dragon! Get the dragon! Get underneath his legs now! Oh my word, he's getting obliterated now. Oh, all the Raptors clearly weren't hitting him before. I mean... Oh, wow. Ow. Ow. Oh. Dark Demon of Hell's been hit by a rock. But the monkey's going down. But that is it. I believe when the shield goes down, 
we have successfully taken on the island with just raptors. And these are the heroes that are left. If you have made it through right to the end of this video, thank you all so much for doing so. I hope you enjoyed watching the journey as much as I did playing it. If you did enjoy, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. The Centre, Scorched Earth and Aberration will be the maps that I'm aiming to complete in Raptors Evolve Season 2. So that will be getting started once again in about the next week or two. Thank you all so much for watching guys and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye bye for now. Can I